divine favor is so powerful on your life when you're moving in honor, things will start coming together for you. And nobody can stop that when the Lord uh, put divine favor on you. Things are going to start uh, happening that been slowed up, it been delayed, it been stopped. And sometimes you don't know um, your principality in your region has not been dethroned yet. When, your prince, when the principality in your region has not been dethroned, that principality has the authority to keep on holding back events that God want to take place in your life. Until that principality is dethroned, uh, satanic will will be displayed on your path. The satanic will. You know, sometimes you don't know that the principality hasn't been dethroned yet. When that principality not dethroned, you have a lot of money encounters that God can't release to you. Because there's an atmosphere God demand for supernatural money being upon you. There's an atmosphere he demands. Come out from among them, that's an atmosphere he demanded. The traditions of men make the word of God none effect. That this is an atmosphere he demanded. Do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Galatians 5.1. This is an atmosphere he demanded. Guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. This is an atmosphere he demanded. Don't forget the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. It's an atmosphere he demanded. Now, saints, the atmosphere of being anti-forgetful is a mental mindset for money. Financial all-timers will make you eat the seed. Financial all-timers will make you rob God. Financial all-timers. When you forget it's the Lord thy God that giving you power to get money, you'll start using the money and forget about sowing. So when he said, um, we talk about the power to get wealth, but that wasn't the only mantle in the text. Wow, wow, wow. Deuteron I'm seeing something else that I never saw before in years. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 has more than one mantle in that text. The power to get wealth is not the only anointing, the only grace, the only ability of God. There's another mantle in there and it said, forget, don't forget the Lord your God. That's the mantle that's going to help you accomplish all financial visions that God has for your life. La pa corre be que demanda. Zero bosata pala sirima. That's going to be the anointing that's going to keep you. So, so watch, watch what we just found out. Isn't that amazing? Uh, Deuteronomy 8.18 is showing us that the mantle that's going to manage the power to get wealth, the mantles to get wealth, is forget not the Lord thy God, for it is he that's giving you the power to get that money. So you're not just getting that money because you got a boss. You're not just getting that money because you got a job. You're not you getting that money because of the power of the Holy Spirit. So, so, so when I sow, I'm letting God know I submit to this power. And when I submit to the power, the power start backing me and it intensify and it increase. So the money that start moving in my direction is greater. The finances that I start to possess is greater. The opportunities that God will bring to me to intensify my financial level is greater. Why? Because I had the power 
to get wealth. But when I chose the power not to forget the Lord thy God. I proved to the Lord thy God that he can give me more power to get wealth. Oh, Jesus. And, and when, when I done proved to him that I, 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 I won't forget him, I'm going to keep on sowing. I'm not going to let the seed be eaten, ate by me. <laughs> See, financial gluttony will cause you to overeat money. And that will ultimately make you delete sowing. Um, fear produces financial betrayal against God. You take a note, write that down. Fear produces financial betrayal against God. Money is a spirit and money no that is supposed to be sown. Money no one is not sown. It is being abused. By the holder. Everything in this earth. Has the life of God in it. In some degree. Money knows what, what God created it for. Money knows. Hey God 2-8. The silver and gold is mine. Money know that it belonged to the Lord God. So money knows when it's supposed to be sown and you eating it. So money, 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 money will, will upset your spirit. You know how the word of God say um, that the Lord will rebuke the devourer for your sake when you tithe in. The devourer is such a dangerous spirit because the devourer often operates sneakily in your life. By devouring opportunities, devouring your joy, devouring your energy, devouring your boldness, devouring your sensitivity to something God wants you to do. That devourer spirit will keep you in poverty. Because it, it, it will devour your focus, your momentum. And saints, the absence of joy is the absence of divine wealth. Because even joy is a power. It's the power of God. And it gives you God's strength. Wealth is God's strength. Supernatural money is God's strength. Riches is God's strength. So when you have the absence of joy, you'll have the absence of divine wealth. Um, when your heart is full of sorrow, the strong man is able to borrow your riches. You take a note, write that down. You take a note, write that down. Carobo serrede. When your heart is full of sorrow, the strong man is able to borrow your riches. Saints, imagine there are some demons that's borrowing your wealth in the spirit realm right now. Because of your lack of sowing. Lack of decreeing. Your lack of using your financial weapons in the spirit. Financial weapons in the spirit. Financial weapons. Sawing is a financial, is the financial weapon in the spirit. There are evil spirits that borrow your health until you sow. They got your health locked up. And the seed will break the power. Of demons that keep your body in pain, in sickness, in disease, and infirmity. Any
in my father's house are many mansions. Right? That's what Jesus said. Let's go to the final part of Psalm 23. David said, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So is he talking about a natural house? No. He talking about the house for all eternity. In my father's house are many mansions. But look at this. The house anointing gives you access to the many mansions. So, 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 so when David said in my father's house, uh, uh, I dwell in the house of the Lord. What he's saying is I'm a dwell in the place. The very same place that gives me the access to the many mansions. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a dwell in the, in the very location where many mansions intensified so look at this I want you to see how look at the word dwell Let's take the D out of the word dwell. What do you get? Huh? Huh? Well, which is the very thing that Isaac unplugged and opened up when he was sowing strong seed. When Isaac started sowing crazily, radically, boldly. Are, are, you, are you catching me? When he started sowing boldly, the Bible said that the wells that Abraham had digged that was plugged up by the Philistines was opened. So when David says in Psalm 23, I will dwell in the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord gives you access to the many mansions. If you take the D out of the word dwell, it's a well. So what David is saying, I'm in this well. Saints, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God. He that dwelleth, that dwell is a well. And in the secret place. Now, okay, it said the secret place. He that dwell, I just revealed to you that is a well. He that dwell in the what? The secret place. So what did Isaiah 43 say? He'll give you the hidden riches of secret places because it's a well. See, I'm teaching you so that you can understand this. It, it, this guy again, I want you to get past your emotions and all that other stuff, the feeling stuff, because that feeling stuff going to die. I'm giving you divine knowledge. I, I, I'm feeding you this. So I'm giving you the ball for you to score. Some of y'all didn't have no balls. I'm going to give you balls right now. Huh? I'm giving you some balls. So it said, he that dwelleth in the secret place. He that dwell. Why do they use the word dwell? Because that word is a well. It said, he that taps into the well 
of the secret place. Saints, you're going to see Psalm 91 different now because you done heard that scripture all your life. But now you're going to have uh, uh, advanced wisdom about what that text means. Now you're going to look at that text way different than how you used to look at it. He that dwell is he that unlocks that well, lives underneath this well of the secret place of the most high God. It's a secret place. Isaiah 45 verse 3 says he'll give you the hidden riches of secret places. So Psalm 91 is a well. And in this well. It give you access to the secret place. And all the riches, the hidden riches that's hidden in this secret place. All your financial wells are being discovered in this day, in this month of September. September is a month of discovering, discerning, and possessing financial and money wealth. You can't say that is not so when I'm giving you the revelation. Do you understand that knowledge is keys in the spirit? Did you know that? Knowledge is apostolic keys. Knowledge is loosened keys. So the fact that I'm giving you this knowledge, you have the keys to unlock what you know. In the spirit realm, you can't unlock what you don't know. That's why my people perish for lack of what? Knowledge. Because the, the knowledge is the keys to unlock all of God's weapons and blessings for their life so that they won't perish. So once you get the knowledge, you got the keys to open what you know. So walk through what I'm telling you tonight. No, it's not soon it's going to happen. It's happening right now. While I'm talking to you, it's happening. You don't got to go on no 21 day fast to understand what I'm telling you. I done went on the fast for you and I'm releasing I'm releasing the food that I received. Stop trying to act mystical. With a shake it fast spirit. You got financial keys with this knowledge I'm giving you right now for you to manifest what I'm saying. This kingdom of Jesus is a supernatural kingdom that no evil spirit has been able to stop. No demon can stop the seed, the time, and the harvest from manifesting in your benefit. There's no demon spirit that has been able to stop this, what I'm telling you. Nobody that has moved in this has been able to be stopped. Your days of taking out financial loans are, are, are broken. Forget a loan. You're going to start telling the, the loan to leave your loan. Let me, let me say this. Tell the loan to leave your loan. Think about that. Telling the loan to leave your loan. Telling the loan to leave your loan. All the latest moves. All the latest moves. All the latest moves. Shop, shop, shop. Did my broadcast? Shop, shop. Some, 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 some of y'all don't act like, don't act like that. You, you don't forgot where that came from. That came from Jimmy Fox show.
Look at this. Financial knowledge is financial authority to possess. Finances in the earth. Financial knowledge is financial authority to possess. Finances in the earth. Now, your pathway is similar to the minister of finances. I'm about to get to the Lucifer. I'm about to get to the Lucifer part of this. But your finances, your financial path, is so similar to the minister of finances. And the minister of finances be working through your man of God to train you, to teach you, to give you insight on the shortcuts. Because why uh, wait 30 years for something that you can receive in 30 days? If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. The minister of finances has a hand in you learning the G spot of God financially. The minister of finances is responsible for giving you matchless understanding and peculiar wisdom on the secret portals to God's heart financially. <laughs> the seed is God's fascination and it's Satan's assassination. Oh my God. The seed is God's fascination and Satan's assassination. Sowing is a funeral service for evil spirits that have plotted against your abundance. Sowing is a funeral service for, for evil spirits that have plotted against your abundance. The, the seed that God moves you to sow is a first degree weapon That destroys second degree demons and release third degree money. Oh my God. Come on, come on, come on, saints. 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 Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Huh? The seed that God moves you to sow. is a first degree murder on second degree demons that release third degree money. God will not always command you to sow a seed. There are times where he offers you not only does he offer you he invites you or when you get close enough to the Lord financially you'll, you'll discern his hand signals his eye signals and his eyes will signify it it'll, it'll, it'll signal you to sow you hear what I said this is a prophetic realm his eyes will signal you to sow. His eyes, he won't say nothing to you. His eyes, he'll side eye you. Because he want to take you on the other side of finances. You, you've been on Pharaoh's side. Now he want to bring you on Moses' side. Saints, Moses and Pharaoh was two financial realms. The financial realm of Pharaoh brought money to them, but that was sorrowful money. That was slave trade money. That was bondage money. That was witchcraft money. That was, I got to be a footstool for demons money. But Moses had the God money. 
divine money, holy money. Watch this. Prophetic money. Glory cloud money cometh into your bosom in this month of September. You, you caught that? Glory cloud money. It cometh into your bosom in this month of September. Glory cloud money. See, there is a sowing realm on you that you have to steward and grow and intensify and, and increase. Because the more you start sowing heavy, the glory clouds start manifesting on you. When the glory cloud is on you, you can call in things that you desire and they'll listen to you. You can call in things that you want and they'll obey you. Your life become interesting when you practice interest in sowing. Your life becomes interesting. Your life is boring, daughter. Your life boring, son, until you start sowing seed. You ain't got nothing to believe God for in real life. It's just in your head. You got to activate that thing into manifestation. You got to do something. Your life going to be boring until you sow. Angels are not permitted to bring financial increase to anyone that is not seed minded and seed active. Some of you all are sowing virgins. Oh my God. You, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. And, 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 and because you are sowing virgins, You, you, you financially inactive in the glory. When you are not financially active in the glory, the minister of finances pass right over your own house. He, he, he go to the next house next to you. The, the, when he don't open up his briefcase, when he come to your door, he just look at your door and, and he look at the list. He don't see your name on the list. Because you, you are sowing virgin. You become financially active with a seed. The Holy Ghost is the architect of conforming you to the proper seed for the proper moment. The Holy Ghost is the architect for conforming you to the proper seed at the proper moment. I ain't saying that again. I'm, I'm drunk. For you to be financially active, there's a financial seed that must be intertwined and become one with your man of God's soul. It must become um, intertwined and, and uh, one. Which your man of God saw. When you are a sowing virgin, it's impossible for the wealth power of God to impregnate you. It's impossible for you to be impregnated with money bags. Some of you all got false financial children in your womb. My God. Because it's just a pigment in your imagination. You're not sowing no seed. You got false. You got false financial children in your womb. Because how you going to get impregnated without the act of sowing? My, my, my. Okay. There are 
radical sowers that become financial Hagar's. Even though someone was first to receive the blessing of Abraham, because you're a radical sower, and they, they were in the position of a financial Sarah, that power of Abraham will flow for you first. The last shall be first, the first shall be last. See, when you're not sowing, there's somebody sowing stronger than you. That's in the position to replace you financially. Do you know how many men are supposed to be millionaires right now? Do you know how many men are supposed to be millionaires right now? But they're not a millionaire because somebody is eating what was supposed, it was designated to hit your bosom. When you got radical sowing focus and sowing fruits, you'll become a financial Hagar. You'll be impregnated with Abraham's blessing. My God. You'll be impregnated with Abraham's life. So the life of Abraham is wealth transference. The life of Abraham is Supernatural money moving. The life of Abraham is debt cancellation. The life of Abraham is perfect health in your body. The blessing, the, the, the life of Abraham is the blessing, is prosperity, is more than enough. When money comes into your hands and you don't sow nothing, you letting God know that this financial flow, you don't want it. You let him know that. And, and he respect you in your decision. And he finds someone else in the earth that he can give your money to. He finds somebody in the earth who he can give your house to, who he can give your car to, who he can give your clothes, your shopping spree to. Because there's a shopping spree in divine sowing that shall be released to the sower. There's a shopping spree. And see, the shopping spree is not shop till you drop. It's shot till you hop. <laughs> Cause if you if you dropping, that means that the, the <laughs> You ever been to IHOP? I'm not talking about the pancakes, Sister Shirley. <laughs> I hop is when I start hopping because of what God has done for me. <laughs> and Tulsa, Tulsa, what you where you been today? I've been to Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, was it good? It, it, yeah, goodness and mercy was following me all the days of my life. <laughs> Did you have whipped cream on yours? No, nah, no, nah, I had cream. In this anointing that whipped every demon that wanted to keep me broke. I had cream in my seed that whipped every financial principality that wanted to rob me. One morning I was inside the store picking up whipped cream, right? So this brother going to come talk to me, Tulsa. You must be a happy fella. <laughs> oh my gosh. I looked over and I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Nigga, what? Did you just disrespect me on the low? Did you just disrespect? Wait, 
and then you just gonna walk away. No, we gonna finish what you just said. We we gonna we gonna figure figure out why. There is an anointing on a strong sower to intercept the financial schedules that was purpose for someone else. There is an anointing of interception on a sower to intercept the financial schedules that was purpose for another, for someone else. Saints, Jesus has power to heal Jairus' daughter. But the woman with the issue of blood sucks that power into her situation. The anointing of wholeness was ready for Jairus' daughter. But she comes and she intercepts the wholeness schedule and takes it for herself. When you're hungry and thirsty, it births legendary sowing in your life. When you're hungry and thirsty, it makes you so out of the glory cloud, so out of the burning bush, so out of the fire of God. You so out of dedication, out of power, out of prophetic grace, out of apostolic government. Remember the church was founded upon the apostle and the prophet? Apostleship will direct you to the divine food steps in the kingdom of the Lord. Saints, did you notice that Jesus fed the multitude? That was his food stamp card. Oh my God. This was his EBT system. Did, didn't he buy their food? Huh? Oh my God, you, you ever heard that before? Didn't he buy them food? So, so this was God's, this was apostolic food stamps. Saints, Jesus, then he took the, he took the food that he, he prepared and he had the apostle. <laughs> oh, 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 Merry Christmas. See, ho, ho, ho. See, you got to get three levels of hold, hold them. You got to get three levels of ho in you out your life so that you can sow seeds. See, you got ho, ho, ho. Then you get the Mary and then you get the Christ must. The cel mas is the celebration of Christ in your finances. <laughs> Just disregard what I just said, because some of y'all, you <laughs> you got a Teddy Pettigrass spirit. You ain't gonna understand nothing I just said. You got Teddy, you got Luther Vandross. You got Luther Vandross spirit. You're not gonna understand nothing I just said. But can I take you out tonight of your financial debts and your financial deceptions and your financial debt? Jesus released apostolic food stamps to the people that he was teaching for three days. That was apostolic food stamps. When you're hungry and thirsty, it creates righteous sowing. Revelatory sowing. It creates uh, patient sowing. 
when you're hungry and thirsty. If you're going to make it into the God-ordained wealth and money for your life, you have to learn how to be hungry and thirsty. Would you keep giving food to a child that just proved to you that they didn't want no food? No, because they're going to push the food away because they're not hungry. Would you keep on giving juice or water to a child that lets you know, hey, I had enough, I don't want no more? No, because they prove to you that they're no longer thirsty. So the same way the Lord is only allowed to feed you as much finances as you reveal to him you're hungry to eat. Now, the fact that we're dealing with eating, look at Isaiah 61. It said that you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. So it shows you that hunger is a part of you possessing the money that God wants you to have in this life. Because it said that you shall eat. You can't eat if you're not hungry or you're casualized the food. How many of y'all know that you eat different when you're hungry and when you have something to eat? When, when you have something to eat, you can casualize that food. Yeah, I just eat some, you know what I'm saying, you know. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But when you hungry, uh huh. Wait a minute. The fit. Uh huh. Now I don't, I don't, I, I don't be watching them anyway. So they don't like me. I don't like them either. So we good. Mm hmm. Oh, uh, give me hot sauce. Yeah, I I I, I wouldn't worry about them no way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 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 they say my foot small, my foot can be small all they want. Make it this. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah, but 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 that's what that's how. Uh huh. Give, give, give me salt. The salt over here. You eat different when you're hungry. You don't casualize when you're hungry. The same way, when you, when you hungry financially, you don't casualize the path that God give you to manifest the gold and the silver that's scheduled for your life. When you're hungry, you become in tune with, Lord, how do I come out with my silver and gold? I done gave, but my giving didn't, it, it didn't bring me into my riches. So obviously... I'm, I'm missing something. Listen, child of God, when, when you find yourself giving and your giving don't avail to nothing, you don't feel higher in the spirit, you don't feel more bold, you don't feel more wise, you don't feel more strong, you don't feel more uh, uh, um, anointed, you got to look at that. I'm giving wrong then. I need financial wisdom on how to sow into my God-ordained soul. Saints, Joseph knew that he wasn't supposed to sow his seed into Potiphar's wife. But watch. Him not sowing his seed in wrong soil was actually a reason why he became the governor over all riches. See, wrong soil can stop your financial dominating seat and position. You heard what I said? Sowing into wrong soil, it can affect your futuristic finances. Because if he would have sowed that seed, remember he was prospering. The Bible said everything prospered while it was in Joseph's hands. Joseph had a financial mantle on his life. Money cometh was on Joseph. There's no secret. You can read in the text 
What is it? Genesis 39? I think Genesis 39. That all the, the money of Potiphar kept going to the next level. Why? Because he got financial anointings on him and he got financial angels on him. And the Lord God is making everything in his hands prosper. And he is in a financial move of God. And Potiphar knows it. If he would have sold his seed into Potiphar's wife. He would have stopped that financial anointing. If he would have sold his seed into the wrong soil, he would have stopped that financial anointing. If he would have sold his seed into what was not the ordained soil. Saints, do you understand how when you sow seed into wrong ministers, you cut the power to get well? Not because somebody talking about Jesus. There are, there are people that talk about Jesus because they know that Jesus is credible. They know that they're a liar. So, so they talk about Jesus to make it sound good. But you listen to them further. They ain't got no revelation. As a matter of fact, let me take it back. Don't listen to them further. We will not hear about your revelation. We will not hear about your consecration. We will not hear about your concentration camps. We will not hear about your head got cut off. We will not hear about no John the Baptist spirit. Not sowing is a Hitler mindset that creates financial holocaust in your life on earth. Not sowing is a Hitler mindset that creates financial holocaust. In your life on earth. You kill the ministry of every money angel that was supposed to minister to you. You kill all financial events that were supposed to take place in your life. Now, I want, I want to show something to you. The world is operating off of Lucifer's false financial authority. The world is operating off of Lucifer's false financial authority. Lucifer is the God of false prosperity. Lucifer was a money angel. Not only was he a guardian cherub, an anointed cherub, he was a money angel. That's why Daniel, uh, what is Ezekiel 28? Not that Daniel 28, right? Ezekiel 28. That's why the Lord was talking about how he accumulated riches and wealth. Why do you think God is saying this about Lucifer? Lucifer is a money angel. That's why Lucifer Stops the seed from being sown. 
by using all these storms and financial hurricanes and reports to distract you from your sowing momentum. Write that down, your sowing momentum. Guard your sowing grace with all diligence. For out of it flows abundant life. Out of it flows money life. Guard your sowing momentum. You guard your sowing grace. Lucifer will send false storms so that you exercise your mental energy, your emotional energy in what's happening around you. So you'll stop sowing seed. When you're distracted, you cannot sow divinely. When you're distracted, you can't sow divinely. It's impossible for you to sow divinely. When you're distracted, you do not have the ability to tap in to prophetic seeds that God is pushing you to sow in a moment. Watch this. When you're distracted by financial satanic winds, your GPS signal will be lost on what direction to go financially. When you're distracted by financial satanic winds, your, your, your GPS signal will be lost on what seed to sow. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 28, verse four. With thy wisdom, and with thine understanding, you have gotten riches. I mean, Ezekiel 28, verse 4. And you have gotten silver and gold into your treasures. So saints, watch this here. Now you know where Isaiah 45 was talking about when it said the treasures of darkness. When it said that the treasures of darkness, look what it said right here in Ezekiel 28 verse 4. The Lord said that you have gotten gold and silver, meaning you have gotten both large money, small money, all types of money into your treasures. So saints, when Isaiah 45 say that he will give you the treasures of darkness, it's talking about all the levels of wealth that Satan been stealing. You will get all the wealth that Satan has been stealing when you're sowing. Now you understand what he meant. Huh? Because it's showing you right here in the text that Lucifer had got gold and silver in his treasures. Let me, let me show you something. So when you sow, you're showing Jesus that money is not your treasure. When you sow, you're showing Jesus that money is not your treasure. So when you show Jesus that your money is not your treasure, that he's your treasure, Jesus translates you, makes you a financial Enoch, a money Enoch. Jesus translates you, make you a financial Philip. You remember the book of Acts? Make you a financial Philip. Jesus translates you into the treasures of darkness and let you possess all the money that you want to have from those treasures. And all this money is stolen money. The treasures of darkness is stolen money. Now, now, let me just show you this. It said the treasures of darkness. Because darkness is a region in the satanic kingdom 
where these demons want you. They are assigned to you to keep you blind about sowing, to keep you in darkness. My God, since this heavy, this heavy what I'm teaching you here. And don't let this go on one ear and go out the next. What I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm giving you the interpretation of the text. Is the treasures of darkness because there is a, a department in the satanic kingdom for darkness to keep you blind so that you won't see that you need to sow. To let you uh, uh, never see that the seed is your way out of slavery is it is your way in to dominion to being a lender and not a borrower wow so that department of darkness is sculptured built and assigned to keep you in the darkness about your financial covenant. What the word of God talks about. You having a hundredfold. You having houses and lands. Why would Jesus, why Jesus came on the scene and said that? So, so you can't say that you for Jesus. And then you try to say that's not so. Because Jesus said this. So if you against Jesus, that's the spirit of Antichrist. You know what anti mean? It mean that you're against. The spirit of Antichrist will make you be against what Christ preached. You imagine how many people, they say, stop giving to the preacher. Well, that's what Christ preached. He said, give and it shall be given. So if I stop what Christ preached, that means I got the spirit of Antichrist, not the spirit of Christ. The spirit of Christ will bring you into large money. The spirit of Christ will bring you into riches. The spirit of Christ will train you how to sow. The anointing teaches you how to sow. Remember, the anointing teaches you all things. The anointing teaches you how to sow. And not only does it teach you how to sow, it teaches you how to reap. Ezekiel 28 verse 4 You have gotten gold and silver into your treasures Look what it's saying Lucifer has built his treasures Look, look, he has a whole treasury system Built off of stealing your money Wow Satan has created his whole kingdom off of your sowinglessness. Saints, Genesis was the beginning of the thief ministry. Oh my God. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. When Adam stopped sowing, he transferred the authority for Satan to build up his treasury. Wow. Satan is borrowing your money until you get the revelation. Of how to sow and honor God on the earth. That's why the Lord not worried about taking care of you. And that's why he told you do not worry. Because the Lord already know. Listen girl, boy. If you just learn how to sow and worship me with the money that I'm going to put in your hands. And name your seed. And praise me. I'll get that money to you. You don't got to know who got the money. 
I'll get it to you. You just got to follow the protocol of kingdom living. Sowing is a kingdom practice. Sowing is a kingdom grace. Sowing is a kingdom mantle. Sowing is a kingdom is a kingdom glory. That's why the Lord not worried about getting finances to you. Because the Lord already know the secret that Lucifer been doing. All Lucifer did was just steal your money while you were sowinglessness. In sowinglessness. Once you step back into kingdom living, once you start honoring your priests, you see, once you start uh, 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 moving in, in, in financial honor, all the graces for wealth will be restored back to you. It's the spirit of the Lord that works through your apostle to quicken you to soul. It's the same spirit that raised Abraham from his financial death. It's the same spirit that rose Sarah from her financial death place. Oh my God. The seed. It's the same spirit that rose Abel from his financial death place. Oh my God. Your apostle is a quickening spirit financially to quicken you back into your, your Genesis anointing. Forget the genocide, step into Genesis. Forget the genocide. You riding on financial chariots in September. This is a money chariot dispensation. I receive my financial chariots. You not gonna ride on my chariot. I receive my financial chariots. I'm gonna sow in September in a legendary way and I'm going to take a hold of my financial chariots and I'm going to ride in them I'm going to ride in them I got my financial chariot will not be stolen by you watch this here name your seed don't sow aimlessly And don't miss your ride when it shows up on the financial chariot. Always be ready. As long as I'm sowing, praising, thanking God, giving Him glory, loosening, binding, moving in my apostolic grace, money got to flow to me. No evil spirit can stop me when I'm using the sowing anointing. My body got to yield to the sowing anointing. My finances got to yield. Everything got to yield. I'm riding on that financial anointing. That financial chariot is taking me to eat from the high places of the earth. I'm living off of the hill of the Lord. When I, when I got wealth grace on me, there's no evil spirit that can stop me. You heard about wealth gates? What well, Jesus in Luke 6 38 revealed, given gates. Given gates. When I'm given, he, he revealed to me there's a gate called good measure. There's a gate called press down. There's a, there's, a, there's a gate called shaking together. Shake. 
making together money coming to you. And, and then there's a game called Run It Over. Run It Over. Run It Over. Psalm 23, David had the revelation of this running over gate. He said, my cup shall run over. Because what David did is stepped into the fourth gate. And the fourth gate was the running over gate. Which is, which is the same gate that Abel was moving in in Genesis 4. It's the same gate that the church was moving in in Acts chapter 4. It's the same gate. Ah, it's the same gate. That the four leper men was moving in, in in the book of Kings. The four lepers. They were they was moving in the fourth gate. See, I prophesied as an apostle and a prophet of the Lord Jesus Christ, as I stand in the presence of God, a fourth gate harvest anointing is sitting on you. I prophesy fourth gate money will flow upon you. Money that will last the third and fourth generation. Fourth gate money is sitting on you in September. I prophesy over your life a given gate anointing. 